Hey there everyone and welcome to another King's Road video. This video is going to be all about storage space, but for, before we get into that I want to take a minute to talk about my Patreon. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's a place where you can uh, come and basically pay me a monthly amount to support me for the content which I create. If you enjoy the content create and you want to support me then this is something you can do. I'm not asking everyone to do it, it's just for those who want to they can do this. Apologies as well if you've seen on Facebook, I've already officially announced it there, I just haven't done it on YouTube yet. Um, so there are no specific benefits for becoming a patron. However, on my longer videos, at the end of those, I'll say a little thank you to uh, the patrons which I have. And uh, yeah, otherwise, just if, you, if you'd like to, go ahead and do it. Otherwise, no trouble at all. So this video is going to be comprised into three sections. The first section is mainly for newer players. Uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, going to be categorizing all the different items in the game. Uh, so that we're on the same page, we know what the items are. I think also a lot of newer players, there are so many different kinds of items in the game, um, and like very specific ones that you don't necessarily know what it does. So it's important to go through there so we all understand what they are, and we're not keeping any random stuff that we don't need. The second section is going to be going through uh, those same categories as I've done it. However, rather than talking about any of the items um, and what they are, we're just going to be talking about which ones you want to keep how much you want to keep of it, and uh, what you just are going to chuck away, or you know, not not keep past a certain point. So that will be the section two of this video. The third section of this video is going to be talking about how to store them. So there are actually a few different uh, techniques you can use to store things much more effectively, and just saves your time and everything. Um, so that's what this video is all about. Um, there are links in the description to go to particular points. Um, if you want to skip over the first section, if you feel like you, you know what all the different items are, you know, you don't need to look through that bit. Just go to section two, watch two and three. I'm going to be trying to include all the inf all the important information in section two and three. And section one really just being talk uh, talking to the newer players, telling them what the items are. So we're going to go through these categories, identifying what the different items are. So we're all on the same page and know what we're talking about. The first category is evolution materials and this is a topic which I'm actually going to have to go into a little bit more detail to explain what's going on here. You can see some evolution materials on this first page, generally where I, record, uh, where I keep them. So evolution materials are generally used for jewels but they also are from a few other places. So um, each of the jewels, there are different shapes to them. Uh, there are crescents, there are tristones, there are spheres, there are squares, there are stars, and there are prisms. Six different types, and each of them use specific evolution materials. Evolution materials are typically used for just one thing. Well, I say typically. They're almost... Oh, almost all. I want to say all. They're all used for just one particular thing, rather than multiple things. Uh, I start a lot of games, and I'll look, and I'll see these upgrade materials, and I think, ah, am I using it for the right thing, or is it used for something more important? And in this game, it's a little bit l simpler. Uh, they have specific uses for each evolution material, so you, you can't really go too much wrong. You just need to know which ones they are for. So the Crescent evolution materials have, uh, well, each of the, the main shapes. You've got the Tristone, the Sphere, the Square, and the Crescent. They each have their own evolution materials for them, uh, which are required. They have a common, they have an uncommon, and they have a rare. Now, ignore the classification of common, uncommon, rare. Basically, that just identifies where you get it from. In fact, you just need loads of common ones, but we'll get into that a little bit more later on in this video. So, um, you have these three things which are used to evolve them, and that's pretty much how they work. Um, so, these ones you can see here are for, uh, for crescents. For tristones, we've got the spider's eye, the black plume, and the stone powder. For squares, we have midnight rose, gold root, and horns. Then for spheres we have silver leaf, blue scarabs, and quarry blooms, or otherwise mushrooms. Uh, star jewels typically use uh, different ones depending on what kind of stats they give. Uh, some are more like crescent jewels, some are more like tristone jewels, some are more like sphere jewels, and they tend to take the evolution materials from whichever one they're they're sort of copying. The prisms, the sixth category, um, is a little bit more um, annoying. So prisms they are not worth evolving. Prisms just give uh, experience for other jewels and they technically can be evolved and fused but it's not worth it because you put more experience into them than you get out of them but crystal powder is is their evolution material so that's something that you don't want to keep now the other um there are a few other items which take evolution materials so we have uh scurions. they all use rune dust 
um, you'll get lots of rune dust from various places and it's used for all of them so keep that tournament jewels now this is the most complicated one and the one where i think a lot of newer players will go wrong so for every tournament they own a tournament only lasts two weeks and they all have their own evolution materials and once that tournament has passed there's no point keeping those evolution materials so each one has a rare uncommon and a common evolution material again ignore the classifications they're all actually just as common as each other and if you look at the description of them in game i'm just going to go to the current ones it actually has a date now on it so you can see this is from the third sorry the 10th of march it's american so i have to read it the other way around the 10th of march to the 24th of march uh, 2020 so it's just for that tournament you use them to evolve the uh, the jewels of that tournament which i'll just talk about uh, for well actually i'll be talking about it in a second so it's only used for those after that time's passed they're not needed at all but you may need them for the reward in that time. So that's tournament evolution materials. So be on the lookout for them and get rid of them. Uh, it's best to put them in a particular place so you know where they are. And then when the tournament's ended, you get rid of them uh, so they don't take up that storage space. Then we've got crown evolution materials. There are only two of these and these you get from uh, the PVP shop. Uh, you can buy them here and then you basically get a crown as well and then you can level up to maximum to get a discount on event tokens and those are those are them there uh, what else have we got we've got uh, these two which are no longer used um, we've got iron and coal so iron and coal are mainly gained from laden thieves you might notice there's a, a box that will drop off that golden thief and it gives you iron or coal these are used for particular items which are just in the early game so you only really need them then and then uh, not anymore so one of those items that's important to level up is the 20 percent gold fine medal uh, that you'll get there if you look on it it has a star level and that's basically what you're evolving um, you put some other items into it very much like a jewel works uh, to give it experience and then you evolve it with the with those evolution materials uh, so that needs it and then also this uh, frozen strand necklace from dungeons uh, if you do that it increases the move speed from one percent to 1.9 percent so there's a couple of uses for those but basically after that you don't need these uh, that's just another type and lastly uh, the last type of evolution material i don't actually have in that guide because i don't have it slightly up uh, quite up to date is the school book stone so from advanced achievements we get school books which are four particular advanced classes and they work like jewels you level them up uh, just in the same way as jewels and then their evolution material is the school book stones so that covers all the evolution materials um, i hope that clears that up a little bit um, there's a lot of different evolution materials in the game and they ha each have their own uses if you want to check it out uh, then this guide is in the description uh, so you can go remind yourself um, like i said this ash and sage stone is no longer in in the game um, i can't remember if uh, yeah actually just they don't actually have any use they weren't in the game when i when I did that but uh, the one which I'm not including there is the school book stone because that was a, a newer edition the next section um, is a little bit shorter to go through and it's jewels so jewels uh, they basically give stats to our characters and you can identify them by their quite unique shape and the fact when you look at it it says this particular one it says fine jewel let's say level and it has some stats and it'll have the stats and then max stats and then a bar with experience like they're quite uh, quite obvious to see uh, you get a lot of them a lot of them are useless and just used for leveling up the other ones uh, there'll be particular ones you get which are good so that's jewels they come in the different shapes as we've covered already and they go into this, the various sockets on your character um, actually I'll just show that for a second so if we look at one of these you can see I've got a triangle and a sphere in this um, in this uh, item this shoulder piece and then I've got two square sockets so this has those sockets in it and then you know you can put those jewels into it so tournament jewels are a different type of jewel and they um they level up and stuff just like jewels but i'm going to give a little bit of details about them because um it's quite good to know um so if you look at it it looks like a jewel it says level one it's got the experience in there it says it's from a tournament uh which is the important thing it's always good to read the descriptions on stuff and tournaments the way they work is when you do the at the tournaments maps you have a chance to get a jewel you get these jewels and you can get a set of these jewels and then turn it in for the reward you need to level up each of these jewels to level uh, level five before you can get the reward and the way you level them up is basically with the excess jewels you get so if you go to fuse one of these jewels i'll just pick a random a random item here um 
what's it i'm leveling up right now leveling up this right now so if we take to uh if we go to put this artifact jewel in you can see it gives experience for my jewel fifty six thousand. now if we go to put the relic jewel into it um it goes and does two hundred twenty six thousand. does four times the amount of experience to other tournament jewels so basically and it's only other tournament jewels from that tournament uh, but the idea is you know you get the set and then with the excess ones you level up the set and that's the way tournaments work with excess ones beyond that or otherwise if you skip a tournament or if the tournament's ended you can use these uh, tournament jewels to level up your own jewels because like you can see uh, 56,000 is not bad to uh, to give to something um, so that's that covers tournament jewels the next section is prisms I'm just going to put these uh, items away so you can actually see a prism here in my inventory um, and if you read the description it literally says sacrifice for 11,000 fusion experience prisms are simply to level up other jewels and they all have the same kind of shape they're pretty easy to see you can see these are like the the big prisms um, they give a lot of up to a lot of experience like this one gives 2 million uh, it's the most that anyone can give um, so they're just to level up your other jewels they're typically seen in rewards and stuff next category is currency so there are lots of different types of currency i'm going to go through the different types like i did with the evolution materials uh, to make sure we're all on the same page uh, the first currency i'm going to talk about is these three uh, the enchanting opal uh, the tome of the enchantress and enchanting moonstone these are for the elite jewels um, so if you go to the enchanting section of the shop you can see the elite jewels here and you can see it takes 100 uh, to then buy um, by that elite jewel so that's simply what they're used for uh, they're gained from a few leaderboards and that, that kind of stuff you can um, you can get something from there um, another currency uh, if we can scroll through my vault we'll find some other things so another currency pvp honor tokens you get these for doing pvp matches and if you go to the pvp section of the shop uh, we mentioned earlier these evolution materials. You buy them with PvP on the tokens. There's also dragon claws in here, which are good to grab. Ah, uh, it's gonna lag, isn't it, when I'm trying to open that? Um, another one here, insignia keys. These confuse quite a lot of players. Um, basically, there's advanced classes in the game now, which are the extra skills on a class, and um, you unlock them by getting the insignia. Which what you do is you get the insignia keys from achievements for from doing tournaments and then you go to the advanced classes section and you can buy an insignia for 100 of the insignia keys it's very simple you only get 600 there are six insignias to buy and you just you get the achievement you buy an insignia um, i have 200 left because i haven't bothered to buy the last two uh, right uh, just yet so um, if we scroll more we'll find something else um yeah we're not going to cover anything more there well, well i'll just mention it now so there are some old currencies if you're an older player uh you may have some blood rubies lying around or that kind of stuff um it, it's hard to know but like basically if it's not any of these things which i've mentioned um then it's probably one of these old currencies that isn't used anymore um these speed up they are used for dragon villages uh, all i'll mention is that these are best used on the production buildings. So when you're upgrading, uh, say, storage capacity, um, it, it's still working while, uh, while it's upgrading. However, if you're upgrading a production building, while it's upgrading, it's not producing anything. So I would say the speed ups are best used on those uh, when you're upgrading those. Um, I don't think I've got any more currency in my... Oh, I have here. Skin rune fragments. Um, sorry, not skin rune. Skin fragments. Um, some These are an older thing in the game to get particular skins from the shop uh, rather than just giving us the skin we get the fragments and then we can buy a skin uh, when we reach a certain number now the currency which i i keep in my inventory here so merit coins these are gained when you get a tournament reward and they are used in the tournament section of the shop uh, where you can then use them cash them in for various rewards there then we've got gold bars and event tokens these are used to enter gold maps and enter event maps on the event board uh, in the middle here you've got the gold maps at the top um, in the special section and we've got the events here you can see 15 event tokens there next we've got dragon stones these are gained from doing events and stuff and they're to help you get the event set 
uh, the, the complete set, you can buy them in the Dragonstone shop, uh, certain items from the event. Uh, then we've got the PvP Honor tokens, which we've already covered. Um, and then we've got the two PvP currency things. So from doing PvP, this is you level up your wings. Basically, you just put these straight in. And again, your appearance as well. The appearance tokens just go straight in there. So that's all the different types of currency, I believe. I'm just going to scroll through quickly while talking. Uh, those are all the different types of currency in the game. And uh, there are some other obscure ones, which I'm not going to cover because they're, they're not around anymore. But like... They're sometimes used in festivals and stuff. They'd be a particular currency for that festival, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, take it as it comes. Um, if you're a new player, it might be a little challenging if there is any of that going on. But, um, yeah, that's how it is. So now we've got potions and consumables. I'm not going to go through all the potions and consumables. We're going to talk about that in the next section of this video. Um, but basically, the way they look and the way to identify them is they have a number next to them. So you can see these look like bottles and they have a number next to them and they they do some benefit for an amount of time uh, that's the way you know potions and consumables generally work so these are some potions here and then we can look at some consumables in my inventory here um which i'm just about to get to yeah various consumables um so i have these all grouped together but these can be uh if you're anything like me you like to hoard consumables and um yeah just just beware of that if you don't have much storage space so now we're going to talk about gear. Gear is like, uh, where well, it's most easily identified because if you look at, um, sorry, I'll just have to get to the inventory. If you look at the bottom of um, the banner here, talking about the Shroud of the Ivory Griffin, it says right at the bottom, it says click to equip this item. That's what an equipment thing is. It's typically something, um, it, you know, be a cape, blah, 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 and it has some stats on it. It maybe have some jewel sockets, and then, it, you know, you can click to equip it. So those are the items, oh, that's the gear. Next we have skurins and fragments. So the skurins come in three shapes. There's the kind of diamond shape, uh, or square on its side, which is a skurin for wizard. And then we've also got a triangle shape, which is for archers. And then a circle shape, which is a skurin for knights. You then also have skurin fragments, which look the same. However, you can identify they're the fragments because they've got the numbers on them. So here you can see, um, or oh, they've also got the like jigsaw piece um, symbol. So these are fragments for various skurins. Uh, and then lastly, we've got lockboxes. So lockboxes you get from as rewards from most of the maps which you do. And um, there are three types of lockboxes. First of all, um, I would identify as like a loot box, which is something that has... Um, some kind of item in it or that kind of thing so here we've got the event items dragonstones in it from a tournament you know you've got a loot box here of um of uh like what's it called uh, a jewel or, or gems um you've also got when you do either of these um you will get uh an evolution material sorry a scurrying fragment box um so basically when it's got that kind of stuff in it um loot boxes basically you just kind of open them um, you've also got two other types, uh, which are score boxes and currency boxes. So score boxes, like these tournament score ones, they've got just score in them, nothing else. Um, you might want to like keep them differently, which we'll be talking about in a second. And then also currency boxes, so like these Valor boxes. Uh, Valor normally costs gems to get extra from, but these ones have Valor in them. So you just open them up and you can get extra Valor at that time. So that's all the different types of items in this game. Uh, hopefully now we're all on the same page so we can go into second section two. Uh, I'm going to talk about what to keep, what to chuck. I realise now there was actually one thing I didn't mention that was on the topic of Skurins, there are these fusion runes as well, which they work very much like prisms do for jewels. They are simply used to give experience to Skurins, uh, that's all you use them for. If you come to this second section of the video without seeing the first section, in the first section we uh, made this list of all the different types of items in the game. We went through identifying what they are, uh, so everyone's on the same page and we all know what's going on. In this second section, I'm going to go through this list um, in turn and we're going to talk through each item and whether or not to keep it. I just recorded this and realized I got super rambly, so I'm going to try and try and go a little bit more punchy through this. Um, the first thing is evolution materials. Now I think this is one of the key things which people hoard way more than they should. Evolution materials, there are 
some which we need in mass, there are some which we don't need much of, and I think your hoarding needs to reflect that, as well as you need to limit yourself. So you can see here on my vault, um, I limit myself to just this page and uh, one other page which is here. There are a few gaps because those are things I'm filling in. So the way I do this is I have a set amount that I fill up to. You can see stone powder here, it's this one line, and when I hit that amount, um, then I stop hoarding anymore. That's that's just my limit. So for stone powder it's that, uh, pepper stone it's that. The rare ingredients here you can see for each of the main categories I just keep 100. I think more than 100 is just not really necessary. The most you ever really need in one go is to like around 60. If you're doing lots of scoring and you need lots of square jewels then maybe keep more of that. But um, basically I think 100 is a good amount just to keep there. Two slots is not many at all. And then for the superior quality ones, uh, these are my, normally my turquoise fragment uh, spaces, I think it's good to, um, you know, keep maybe like 300, 400. I have blue scarabs on the other page as well. So 300 or 400, well, I mean, I could scale that in, really. Um, just like 300 or something like that. You only need a few hundred, and that's where you stop, and then fill back up to that. And then the common ingredients um, have a few hundred of those, and then stop. That should be enough, more than enough, really. Uh, the way I've per personally been doing this, because I've had a lot of things which I've been needing to evolve for the last few years, really, is for the rare ingredients and the uncommon ingredients, I keep a certain amount and I don't hoard any more. And then the common ones are the ones which I need and I'm like filling up. And then when I hit the limit for that, so say, uh, so now I have no tristones to evolve, but when I did have tristones to evolve, when I hit that amount of stone powder, I then would look and see, okay, what needs evolving? And then I'd go and evolve something. And then I'd uh, then have to like, you know, restock back up to this amount. When I hit that amount again, I go, okay, what's next for evolving? And, you know, that's how I personally did it. But overall, important thing is to not keep any more than a certain amount. Limit yourself. Uh, because I see people with like a whole page of stone powder in the vault. And that's just not necessary. You won't need that much. And it's much better to hoard other things. So those are the the normal dual evolution materials. As for the other evolution materials, like rune dust, you know, just keep however many you want there. Um, iron and coal is a type of evolution material that uh, isn't really needed. I keep 100 of each, but to be honest, you don't really need to keep any. I used to have like a few hundred iron and coal, and then I looked at it and I thought, what's the point in keeping that many? So, you know, get rid of that if you, if you need it, um, if you've got too much. The um, evolution materials for crowns, I would recommend keeping 250 of both in your vault and no more than that. That is more than enough for a crown. Uh, to max a crown it takes 215, so basically by having 250 in your in your vault it means you've always got a max crown there on hand. Whenever you need to make a max crown it's right there and then you know when you get a new crown with an event you buy the crown, you can buy the evolution materials and you get the max crown just there and you don't need to touch this. This is just your backup. I'd say don't don't keep any more than that. Um, other evolution materials, I'm trying to think of now. Tournament evolution materials, pretty self-explanatory. Get rid of them at the end of the tournament. Just make sure you, you put them somewhere that you can find them and get rid of them uh, at the right time. Um, I don't think there's any other evolution materials really that uh, that are around. Um, we talked about the rune dust and stuff. So that, that covers evolution materials. I think it's an important thing in general to not go beyond a certain amount. Um, you can see... Uh, the way I do my evolution materials is I have them stacked up here and then I then I put them in. Anyway, uh, the next one is jewels. So jewels, uh, I don't think many people hoard jewels too much, but I found that I had a bit more than I needed and I scaled it in. You can see this is my one page of jewels and it's not even full. Um, jewels themselves can be stored on like your other character's items or other gear you have lying around as well, although it's a little harder to find then and you might forget about them. Um, but basically with jewels, once you have a good set of jewels on your character, there's only so many jewels you can equip. And you might find if you look at your jewels and there are some which you like, you look at them, they're, they're not that strong. Like, you're never really going to put it into your character. If there's any doubt in your mind, you should probably just get rid of it. Like, if you've got some good jewels anyway, then you're not really going to use the weaker jewels. So the kind of stuff which I have kept here is, I've got loads of 24% shadow ones. These are all elemental jewels that I um, plan to level up at some point. Got some good uh, damage jewels, armor penetration jewels, a fun interesting jewel, this crit rating and attack speed. Uh, for my spheres I've got 
the shadow sphere. I've got some big lifesteal spheres uh, that I probably won't use. I mean, I'll hit a point where I've got enough elite spheres that are better than this that I, I'll just get rid of them. Uh, I've got these armor percent uh, spheres that uh, I don't use because I'm wizard. And then these experience spheres that I can't actually fit into my farming gear. But if I ever just want to get rid of gold fine stuff and put experience in instead, um, these are these are some good so it's good spheres, so I've kept them. So that's the stuff which I've kept. Obviously, it's very, very much dependent on what you have, what you have on your character. But I think it's worth looking through your jewels. If you have quite a few of them, just look through and see if you have some ones which are maybe a bit weaker and you're not actually going to use them. Uh, cut back on that and, you know, limit yourself to, like, say, one page of your, your vault um, and see what that, you know, makes you uh, get rid of. The next one is tournament jewels. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory as well. Um, you know, you save them up over the course of a tournament. You need a space to store them, and then you know maybe use them for the reward and stuff, or you you just use them for experience for your jewels. You know, get rid of them at the end of the tournament, basically, uh, on one of those mega fusion days or whatever. Uh, the next section is prisms. Now, prisms you obviously have the ones which you get from the story maps that you just use for experience. Uh, the big prisms, though, um, these are slightly more interesting. So, the way I do this is. These ones which are big but not the biggest, so they give like 66,000 or 99,000 or whatever, I keep them and then on Tuesdays when there's the Mega Fusion Day where you're more likely to get more experience out of it, especially if you've got the guild skill boosting the Mega Fusion, then I use them at that point. So I hopefully get the most out of them. It's more worthwhile because, uh, you know, they'll take up a few slots, but I've got space to store these to then try and get more value out of them on that Tuesday. The really big prisms, though, I keep a little stash of some really big ones. Um, they're particularly good if you want to level up something quickly, like score jewels uh, or that kind of thing. So I, I hold on to some of these big ones to use uh, for those particular times when I do scoring and that kind of thing. And if it ever gets too much, like uh, I let it get to like you know maybe about like another line or so, and then I'm like, okay, no, no, I need to cut back on them. I'm just going to use them for some fusion. Um, and yeah, that's how I manage that. I recommend that for pretty much everyone. You know, have a little space for your big prisms and let them stack up. Use them a bit more efficiency, but don't um, don't go overboard with it unless you're going to mass hoard for then doing some scoring. Uh, the next section is currency. So um, most of the currencies, like they just take up one slot, like merit coins and gold bars, event tokens, stuff like that. Doesn't really matter. I'm not going to talk about them really because they just take one slot it's not about you know we're talking about storage here however there are a few currencies which are very old that i'm sure people have lying around for example blood rubies now i keep one slot of blood rubies just as kind of memorabilia i have this one slot it's got a big stack of 790 and I, you know it takes up one slot so however i do know that in the past especially because we had a lot of different currency for different events and stuff people ended up holding on to it now enough times have passed that a lot of people have cleared out their old bits of currency. But if you haven't yet, then take a look and just see if you've got any of that lying around that you could clear out to uh, free up a little bit more space. I think that's pretty much what I want to say on the currency. I'm just going to take a second to uh, think. Oh, I, I keep uh, I keep 60 of these um, speed up items for the Dragon Village just in case they increase the levels on the Dragon Village stuff. Then I can I have these ready. Uh, to, to make things a bit faster. Um, I use them on the production buildings rather than the storage buildings because that's more efficient. Um, I think that pretty much covers currency. The next one is potions and consumables. Now this is one of my personal issues that I hoard uh, and I've, I limit myself and I think if you are a hoarder of this yourself um, I, I'm sure we can have a laugh about this together because yeah they're very tempting to hoard because they give you huge benefits. However you can see I've got a ridiculous amount of GLPs. I mean, to be fair, to be honest, I'm probably just going to have to sell some of these at some point because I'm never going to use that many. <laughs> it's so many hours of, of farming there. You can count it up if you like. We've got these 90-minute uh, ones, the 45-minute ones, and the 30-minute ones down here. Um, anyway, so you can see I limit myself to this one page in my vault. Um, now, saying that, I do have a slight spillover with uh, damage potions. But anyway... I think it's good to limit yourself to a certain amount and only do the important ones. There are certain ones you shouldn't keep, like the Elixir of Avoidance. This only makes you dodge 
the basic attacks from small enemies and honestly it just doesn't really factor in very much so they're kind of pointless so the big potions and stuff i try and keep to just one page there and then when we go to the inventory you'll see uh, so we'll go through it in, uh, in the order I've got things stored. These are the re rejuvenation potions. I've got a ridiculous amount here. 240 is more than you need. However, the reason is because um, the three, uh, the small re rejuvenation potions only stack up to three. So this used to be all small ones, and then I've replaced them over time with with the bigger ones. Uh, so it used to be 36 of them. Um, I'd say I felt like that was quite a safe number. Uh, to then you know stack up to, uh, rebuild up to if I actually use them uh, but you can see they've been replaced here um, and then when it comes to these ones I keep 36 uh, mana potions I keep 36 cooldown potions uh, these are pretty handy in some instances for just doing a quick tournament that's tricky or you know that kind of stuff uh, maybe a guild raid and you don't want to use a big potion if you're only going to do one guild raid uh, so you can just slap a two minute cooldown potion on um, the damage potions I've recently put myself down to just 12 because I've got so many of these damage potions, uh, the big group ones, that uh, there's no point in me really keeping any more than that. So I've got it quite nicely on one page there. Um, so that's potions, sorry, excuse me, <coughs> that's potions, uh, most of all. Now we go to consumables, so I'm going to go into a little bit of detail on the consumables of which to keep and which to get rid of. Less so much on the which to get rid of because I don't have them, uh, but anyway, these cupcakes you can see, I've just limited myself to 160, uh, same on the Founder Cider. These consumables are the ones from the farming maps, and they ha cap at 60, which the reason why I've got them at 60 is so that I don't accidentally pick them up, I have them in my inventory and then need to sell them off. Uh, they're just there already, so then none of them will ever get picked up. So these are my consumables that I have, um, which we'll go through. These are the really powerful ones that are worth keeping there may be a few really powerful ones that I don't have, uh, but on the whole, I think I have most of the really powerful ones just kept because I like to hoard and never use these. Um, so this is a Holiday Eggnog. It makes you invincible for five seconds. It's got a 10 second cooldown. It's basically a weaker version of the normal Eggnog, which the main reason why this is stronger is because it's got a one second cooldown. So you can just keep yourself constantly invincible. Um, I've got this ice wine, which I, you know, I, I, both the ice wine and the elixir of the mist dragon are like limited items that came out one time, uh, so I have them kept just kind of for memorabilia. Um, runic potions are exceptionally powerful, 80% damage reduction for 5 seconds, and again, 1 second cooldown, so you can keep it on constantly. Uh, they're super powerful for keeping yourself alive. Smoke bombs are very well known, they make you invincible for 10 seconds in that area, and they have a 10 second cooldown. Uh, you can use them in PvP. Most of these, I would say, keep them or use them in PvP. Um, that's where their biggest power is, and where they can, you know, maybe make you win a match that you otherwise wouldn't. So smoke bombs make you invincible. Fear potions, I can't remember exactly. Um, I think it's like in PvP they they make them unable to attack for like five seconds or ten seconds or something. Same thing with love potion. This makes your enemies um, in PvP unable to attack for 10 seconds, uh, which is quite insane. So you can completely disable people with these. Uh, the protector potion, I'm not sure if we actually can get this anymore, but this makes uh, an archer which um, it can do a stun attack that stuns the enemy for 10 seconds uh, in PvP, which is yeah, pretty nuts. Um, and then eggnog we've already talked about. I've got some, some consumables here for the um, getting the dragons back. And then these are the consumables which I'm going to use up. So I only keep 40 of these battle rejuvenation potions. I think it, it depends on how many you use. But again, limit yourself. I used to have like 200, 300. I think it's good to cut back. And then these ones are both basically instant full heals and mana refreshes with a one second cooldown that are usable in PvP. They're just so powerful in PvP. I have these for a push. Uh, I actually forgot about them last time I did a PvP push. I was going to equip them and just use them uh, in the matches that were tough. Then I have some damage potions that I really need to use up, uh, as well as a couple of experience potions. And then a couple of potions just for fun, the polar bear and the uh, ice drake. Um, they're less powerful, and I wouldn't recommend uh, keeping them. So that covers the really powerful consumables that are worth keeping. The other consumables, use them and have fun with them, because they're not worth the slots in your inventory. Uh, 
if you were like me in the past, you may have loads of consumables there that you just don't need, and you can you can free up some space. So that covers the potions and consumable section. The next section is gear. So uh, quickly covering first the fabled gloves and rings. Um, if you like to keep old fabled gloves and rings, and I would recommend it in general, um, only keep the strong ones. Get rid of the weaker ones. I bring out the guys and stuff to like say which are good, which are not. Um, get rid of the worst ones. Uh, well, the, the anything which you're never going to use, just get rid of it. It's only worth keeping the good ones. Um, then, in terms of old gear, I've got like my old farming set. I've got a a weapon here with three percent damage. Um, uh, armor with fifteen percent armor. Uh, so yeah, fifteen percent armor. Uh, I meant chest, not armor. Uh, at the beginning, uh, these have mana for basic attack. Like I've got the original Queen's Guard VIP items. Um, I've got some. Uh, trinkets with move speed that kind of stuff so I've got some old gear if you have any of this stuff limit yourself again to only like the special things that you want to like bring out to show off to people or that kind of thing uh, you can see I've got this one page here um, and I keep a few things like uh, well I keep like my farming trinkets uh, which I used to use in here um, the other insignias and that kind of stuff um, different curios and everything um, yeah, just make sure you're not you're not hoarding too much of it. Uh, in my inventory, I've got my farming set. Um, I've then got uh, my other curios and stuff, uh, move speed stuff for the other classes. I've also got trinket set uh, because I mix trinkets. I keep the most current trinket set, so I can go to a full set if I need to or want to. Um, but I don't really keep anything else, and that's what I'd recommend. Just you know, try to cut back if you need, uh, if that's something you need to cut back on. Now we go to skill runes and fragments. So skill runes, I would say, is one of the things that is definitely worth hoarding, like getting all the skill runes, because these actual ha actually have a benefit to your character. Like you think about the other stuff, like evolution materials, difference between four hundred and six hundred isn't that much. But having a few more skill runes, you know, I have almost all the wizard skill runes in the game, and I love having that. And they don't actually take up too much space. I mean, sure, I've got this whole page full. The others with the wizard scurrins, uh, they cover just this top bit here. And that's pretty much all of the wizard scurrins in the game. And then I've got the knight and archer. The only thing I will say is if you only play one class, then only keep the rare ones of the other two classes. Uh, the common ones which you can get any easily at any time, don't keep them because, yeah, like if you have all the scurrins for all the classes, it does take up quite a lot of space. Um, so yeah, that's that scurrins. In terms of the fragments um, and yeah fragments uh we have these in my inventory you can see i keep quite a lot of them i think it is worth hoarding them and um if you're going to as part of a guild do a push on the guild activity for skill runes then you can save a few pages of these um you know by saving space from other things you can hoard this up and then do a load in one go um or otherwise just you know let them stack up a bit and then use them from time to time um, in terms of the fusion runes, now fusion runes as opposed to fragments, it used to be the case that people liked keeping the fabled fusion runes because they gave 2500 experience and they took up one inventory slot. However, if you save 999 fragments of something at uh, Skurun which gives 500 experience each one, that 1000 fragments is the equivalent of 12,500 experience for just one slot. And that 12,500 is five times as much as you would get from the fusion rune. So I would say don't don't ever keep the fabled fusion runes. I don't think people do do it nowadays, but it used to be a thing. And I'd say it's much better to just save up the fragments rather than the fusion runes. Now we go to the last section, which is um, something which is worth hoarding again. So lock boxes. Now there are three types. I've categorized them into loot, score and currency loot being the sort of stuff like uh, tournament jewel boxes event item boxes that kind of stuff now for the majority of those you do simply want to just open them up uh, when you get them however the one thing which you might want to want to keep um, is the event item boxes so stuff revolving around events you can't hoard a lot of it uh, from one event to the next because they want you to get a crown each time and blah 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 However, what you can keep are the event item boxes. So if you're limiting your crown use, so you only get a crown every other event, so you don't do that much PvP and you want to have a max crown and you just you just get a crown every other event, what you can do to help you on the events when you don't have a crown is you can do extra runs when you do have a crown and then save a lot of these boxes. 
then when the new event comes out and you get the items and stuff you can supplement your dragon stones with all these uh, boxes that you saved up um, having the ability to hoard those is quite quite good as for the others we've got score and currency now for score boxes most of them aren't that worth saving up however tournament score boxes which i have here are worth saving up reason being is in most cases the score you get from a box as opposed to doing a run of the thing so like event uh, you get a lot of score from the event compared to uh, doing like opening the box but in tournament you don't get much score so the score in tournament increases as you go up the difficulty as well as from map one to nine it increases however the final map on the hardest difficulty gives you something like 50 maybe 60 score which compared to a single premium score box that averages at 130 so you get uh, the equivalent of two runs on average from each box so if you can save up lots of boxes well the score from that is far more than you'd get from doing a load of extra runs and in fact that's what people do to get top 50 or you know any kind of position on the tournament leaderboard and it's in fact what i do a lot of the time so you can see here um, i've got some saved up i've got another page in another place um, and i'm actually even doing it this week um, you can see i'm in the top 50 uh, for that uh, wait, if i hit the right button yeah i'm in the top 50 for that uh, 300 gems now there's probably some people screaming at the screen right now saying like no 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 don't tell other people uh, because only 50 people can get it each day but um, yeah, I think it, I think it's a good thing for everyone to know that uh, that's something you can do. So you can score these tournament boxes. Then one week you get the score jewels leveled up, and then you can just open these boxes in the happy hours. So you get the double points, and you score on the leaderboard that way. Um, so that's the only kind of score box which I'd recommend saving. Uh, the other ones I would not. As for the currency boxes, you would have seen as I've been scrolling around that these valor boxes are great to keep. Valor boxes, uh, even on the discount, the half price, and the reopening, they cost 58 gems a pop. If you're not doing the reopening, it's 63 gems. And so each one of these I've saved, I basically saved myself roughly 60 gems, which is a lot when it stacks up. So when a festival comes and I have to do loads of, uh, loads of tournament runs and I, I choose to go for it, I have all these Valor boxes which I can pull from without spending any gems. Um, it's, it's very good to do that. And, you know, if you do it on the bonus map as well for the festival and stuff like, uh, well, for the tournament, sorry, I mean, then you get the extra valor from that and everything. And it, it works out so efficient and really nice. Um, it's basically the way to do festivals right now, which require 900 tournaments. Uh, it save up a load of valor boxes and you can do them for free. So um, valor boxes are great to save up. I also save these evolution material boxes. Uh, sorry, not evolution. They're just evo lot boxes for tournaments. Uh, reason being is... If I'm at the end of the day and I have 7 out of 10 Valor, I want to go to sleep, but then I'm like, oh, it's kind of inefficient because I'm about to get an, a run. Well, if you have some of these saved, then you can open up a few and get the 3 or 5 Valor from there. And you can then finish off, um, you know, be efficient, basically get an extra run before sleep. So I, I have some of these saved up. I have quite a few right now. I usually keep like, I don't know, like about 20 or so normally. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's another thing you can keep. Um, and then you've got the other kind of currencies, you've got the raid token boxes, uh, you've got the PvP boxes, you can use these PvP boxes when it's like, I don't know, for a festival or if you get the the sprite or whatever it's called from the shop to get double rewards, then you can use these PvP boxes then and it's you know, really efficient with your gems and stuff. So you can save these currency boxes and that kind of thing to be more efficient with your gems and get more rewards from them uh, by using them at a particular time. And I think overall, the general idea here with your storage management and choosing what to keep and what not to keep is by cutting back on certain things like evolution materials, which I think is a big one for people, potions and consumables, maybe jewels, I don't know. Cutting back on all that stuff opens up a lot more space so that then you can hoard the things that you want to hoard, like valor boxes, like score boxes. You can see how I do it here. As I've scrolled around, I'm sure you've looked at what I have in my inventory and vault. And you can see how I have the space to to do um, to hoard particular things, and that's ultimately uh, a massive benefit of you know doing an overhaul of of your storage and seeing what you keep. So then you can do this stuff. We now move into the third and final section of this video. If you've managed to watch through the first first and second section, um, it's, this video is pretty long by now. 
Um, so thanks for sticking around. But otherwise, if you skip to this section, because you just want the tips and tricks, I'm going to try and bullet a few uh, very good tips and tricks for organizing your inventory. I'll just give a slight note, first of all, a disclaimer if you like, that you can use the function here to sort by certain things. I never use this. I don't like it. Uh, but a lot of people do, especially if you're playing on mobile, it can be a nightmare to organize your your stuff. It's it's so much easier on PC. So this can be a, a lifesaver for getting um, getting the particular items you want. However, if you want to organize it in a way that minimizes your time and you know maximizes your output or you know whatever you want to say, um, I'm going to try and give some tips. So firstly, you'll notice that I have a few pages free at the start of my inventory. This is important obviously as you do runs for things you're going to get items and stuff and you want them to be on your first page. You want them to be very easily accessible. So do a, put an absolute minimum at the beginning of your inventory. What I have here is simply my currency stuff. So I have my event tokens so I can always see my event tokens instantly. Gold bars similarly. Merit coins these could be somewhere else to be fair but it rounds it off nicely with the eight uh, eight items here. This is my crown for the, you know, crown for the current event, and then otherwise, you know, the currency bits. Eight slots isn't that much, so then I have all these slots here for the new stuff coming in, and otherwise I've got like a, a couple of pages here free. Now I've actually ended up having a few pages free, which is really good. Um, but anyway, so uh, we'll get to we'll get to what I'm like putting there in a second. So first point, have the first few pages in inventory free. Second point, which I think is the most important, um, uh, next most important, is farming stuff put on the final page of your inventory. This is so useful, and I, um, I've had a couple of people who like find it really annoying switching between their farming gear and their normal stuff, and then I've got them to put it on the last page of their inventory, and then they're like, wow, it's actually, that's really easy. Because I've got everything here, apart from annoyingly having you've got one item uh, too many. Uh, which is this uh, this line glorious gov on the other page but um by having it all on the last page it means you can just you know instantly skip to it like that then go and equip all the items and then you're good to go and it's not in the way at the beginning of this inventory so by having it there it's just just ideal and third point which tacks onto that is the most easily accessible parts of your inventory and vault are the first and last page so the things which you want to get to instantly are you put at the first and last page um, or not necessarily what you want to get to instantly but what you're going to uh, more frequently than other things so for example I'm saying the farming gear I mean maybe you're not going to it that frequently but it will put you off if it's not there on the last page um, and then uh, in my vault what I have is my evolution materials I personally I like to see these on my first page uh, so I can I can get to it. Um, I'm often going to my second page, which is my tournament page. So as I get jewels from tournaments, I just slot them in here. The Evo boxes as well. Um, I've I've said just at the end of the last section, you know, finish off the end of the day. Need a bit more valor, you can get from here. Um, I've then got my valor boxes um, reasonably easily accessible when I'm doing lots of extra runs and I'm using my valor boxes. It's not too much of a pain to go to page three and four there. Um, another page which I'm frequently visiting is my Big Prisms praise, uh, page. So as I get Big Prisms, I want to put them into my vault, so I can just slap to the end, put them in, uh, put them in there. So whichever items or things you want to be putting at the uh, and getting to frequently, put them at the front and the back of your inventory in your vault. Um, so whether it's the same as me or it's something else, just organize it like that. The next thing. And this is something that I feel like people probably know. However, if anyone isn't doing this, it might be a revelation for you. And that is to do with Skurins. So with Skurins, there are the fragments and there are the Skurins themselves. Skurins themselves, you want to put in your vault. And the fragments you want to have in your inventory. Reason being is so so obvious when it gets, like so clear when it gets told to you. So by having these Skurins in your vault, what happens is I can still equip these Skurins in my vault. Uh, they're all available still. However, and when I equip them, they're going, the one that I'm unequipping is going into my vault. So it's not going to be bringing it into my inventory at all. However, if I go to like Fuse, you can see there's only this Skurin fragment, uh, sorry, uh, Fusion rune here 
if I had my screens in my inventory, instead there'd be a ton of screens here, which I might accidentally fuse into my screen, which is just a nightmare. You know, you don't want to do that. And you don't want to have to like be looking through your screens or making sure you're clicking the right bits. Just have them in your vault and don't never have the risk of accidentally fusing any of them. Um, and you won't be wasting time fiddling around trying to find your actual fusion runes that you want to put into your screwing. So screwings in the vault, for sure. Screwing fragments, however, you want in the inventory. Reason being, more than anything else, is if I'm in a map or otherwise just open any um, rune fragment box, if I didn't have them in my inventory, I would get the, them in a slot in my inventory. And this would just completely fill up these first few pages of my inventory and I'd be forever going to my vault and then going like oh I need to put this into the vault you know just always having to click it into the vault however by having it in my inventory um, I actually have them roughly in the middle of my inventory because I don't really need to get to the metal uh, they automatically get slotted into these slots so I never have to worry about them the only time I have to worry about them is when I go over a thousand on a, on a, on a fragment and then it will appear at the beginning of my inventory and I just then put it put it into a new slot. So that will save you a ton of time if you're not doing that. The next point I want to say um, is, well now I, I've made the main points, I'm going to go into uh, where I choose to put particular things and how I would generally recommend it. So I've already made the recommendation farming gear on the last page. Uh, there's the screwing fragments on the uh, middle pages because you don't need to get to that. Score boxes I put sort of towards the outside, but not right at the outside, because, um, and I say score boxes as well as like meaning valor boxes too, uh, because when you get to them, you might want to be uh, like using a few and then checking how much you've got and then using a few more and stuff. And if you keep having to scroll to the middle page, it'd be a massive pain. Uh, score boxes as well. If you're doing it like right up to the end of the hour, you, you need to be able to get, get to them quickly um, to try and get through as many as possible. Uh, like without without so much stress um, consumables and stuff can be in the middle as well um, personally I use cons I have consumables in my inventory I know a lot of people get irritated by that because when you go to equip a, a consumable there's just you know so much there it's up to you where you want to keep them I just keep mine in my inventory because I have a lot of stuff in my vault already um, and I just need to divide things between my inventory and my vault um, so consumables is just one of the things which I keep in my inventory. That pretty much covers what I keep in my inventory in terms of hoarding. And then uh, in my vault, I have it done by particular pages. They do certain things. So I have my evolution materials page easily accessible. I have my tournament page easily accessible. I have then a couple of pages of valor boxes for the jewels. I don't really need to come to jewels that much. So, you know, they're towards the middle. Um, then we have uh, it's my second evolution materials page. Um, I don't really know why they're split to be honest but anyway screwings you don't need to come to at all as well as like this is old random gear that I don't really need to get to so it's it right in the middle um, as well as like you know the fable stuff here these boxes um, you can't actually use them in the vault so it doesn't matter so much like I'd use these on a on a pvp push and basically I just grab a ton of them and th throw them in by, into my inventory and then use them potions as well can't really use them for the vault um, so I just have them close-ish to the outside. Um, the reason why I don't have the screwings the other side is because for the exact layout, um, I have it divided into certain sections. And that's what I'm going to talk about just in a second um, after going through this. And then I've got the, like I said, the, the prisms there at the end. So here's where it gets a little bit more complicated in terms of the exact layout and why I have mine laid out in a, you know, in a certain way is um, ideally for maximum efficiency and um, you need to be prepared for expansions because like I said there'll be certain things which you keep and certain things which you um, sorry keep at a certain limit and there are other things which you want to hoard so you need to have space for those hoarding things and to expand into um, so for example here I have potions then I have screwings now if more screwings come out or otherwise I pick up more screwings I'm going to need a little bit more space for my screwings. So what I have here is a space which right now has valor boxes in because I'm hoarding them. But ultimately, I can expand the screwing fragments, um, you know, to the end of this page. So I won't have to like reorganize things as more screwings come in. 
I might have said fragments in there, sorry if I did. Um, anyway, so then, like, because that's a space which I've left that it can expand into, that then becomes a hoarding space. And then uh, another section here, this is uh, where my PvP boxes go, so they slowly expand. Each week I get one of them and it expands into this space, and then um, ultimately when it's going to hit, like, the end of this page, that will be my time as I, like, okay, I need, I need to, like, get a sprite and just use up all of my PvP boxes, um, you know, maybe push on the leaderboards, whatever, you know, we'll see, but that's when I'll use them up. And so I then hoard from the other side with, I, with the Valor boxes um, filling in that space uh, up to where the PvP boxes go up to. Um, and additionally here I have the gear stuff basically in the same place, but then rounding up to then go into the next section, which is the PvP boxes. Um, then we have, so this is my sort of official Valor box place, which I store them in, these first two pages. I don't have anything else that I want to keep there. That's because I like to have 50 to 100 Valor boxes at any one time, um, so I always have them available. Um, my tournament boxes here, like I said, well, you can probably see, I get the jewels from the bottom and the Evo bo boxes from the top. And, um, you know, if I, if I ha get too many Evo boxes, right now I have too many, but I don't have too many jewels, so it's okay. If I got more jewels, then I might just go like, oh, you know what, I'll open a few of these um, and use the Valor from them uh, just to make the space. And then in my inventory, talking about uh, what I have here. So uh, the evolution materials, which I'm currently gathering to then put into my vault, um, I have them on page three. So it's not too bad to get to, but it's not interrupting the start, very start of my inventory. And then uh, these will stack up. And when they get to 50, I then plop one in and then, you know, keep going. So I can see which evolution materials I want to be picking up very easily. Because it, it's something I often forget. I'll be like, okay, uh, I, am I picking up stone powder? I can't remember. So then I can look at page three and see if, if stone powder is here. If it is, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm stacking up on that. Um, so yeah, that's why I have that there. Um, this is basically the current festival potions, which I just have here. Um, so I can get rid of them when the festival's over and they expire. Um, they're kind of obvious, they're, you know, stand out, uh, that I can get rid of them. And this is like the, the new set I'm picking up. I, I need the weapon right now. So I, I lay out the new set, um, so I can see which items I'm missing quite nicely. And this is basically the end of my space at the beginning of my inventory. So I have four pages which I can fill in. This is my tournament page and you won't, you can't see right, very easily right now. But the layout here is the f the first nine slots are for the nine jewels from the tournament. Then you have the evolution materials, and then I can double layer the evolution materials. So that fits that that uh, space very nicely. And basically, when I'm getting a reward in tournament, that's how I lay it out. Uh, so I can track which jewels I've got, how much evolution materials I've got. Um, because these are here standing out again, when a tournament's ended, I know to sell these off. Uh, I have one space which is, this is because I originally designed this when there were 13 jewels uh, for tournament. But anyway, there's one space here which I actually use as my current damage potion that I'm using up. Um, and then, yeah, it goes into the potions and you can see I've kind of laid these out. So these are my mini potions on one page. Then we go into consumables, blah, 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 go through consumables. Uh, there's my PvP potions which mark the end of where I want to be saving up to. These are the ones which I then want to get rid of, uh, the potions I need to get rid of. Uh, before we go into bit of score box in the middle, bit of valor box before then my screwing fragments. So, um, oh, actually, yeah, I can go in. So that there's like massive expansion possible for these screwing fragments. You can see it starts on page 13, but ultimately I can just keep on going. I've got a little bit of space before then I start my my score boxes, and this is all just mass hoarding space up right up until the end of my inventory. So. I don't expect you to directly copy what I've done, you know, maybe you do a different variant of it, but hopefully it's giving you an idea of how you can lay out things to maximize your efficiency in terms of time you spend uh, moving items around and fighting items, as well as um, laying it out in a way that it allows for expansion of the particular things you want to hoard. Hopefully um, you can gain... Uh, Hopefully this video will inspire you to go and sort your inventory out and get rid of some of the old stuff, limit your hoarding of certain items so then you can hoard other things more easily and otherwise you don't have storage space problems. Uh, you can see I have max storage of both things and it is excellent for being able to hoard whatever I want 
uh, however I want. And by organizing everything, it to be honest, it did take like two, maybe uh, maybe two to four hours to originally plan and organize and move everything around to where where it was being. However, the amount of time I'm sure that I've saved because I have it organized like this is just masses. And so I highly recommend you try and do it yourself and find some layout which works for you. And hopefully um, this video has helped you with that. Uh, hopefully it's also made you have a little look and get rid of some of that old junk that you don't need anymore. Uh, the last thing I will mention, which I forgot to mention earlier on, is um, there is a particular item called slime, which some people will find in their inventory and they'll look at it and they'll be like, where did this come from? This is for particular items in the past, which um, basically Rumble's decided they don't want this item around anymore. And um, so they've either chopped it out of the, the file, um, chopped the file out so it doesn't exist anymore, so it then defaulted into slime, or in some cases they actually did it for some things because they wanted to reuse that item later as something else. So they they made it turn into slime, so anyone with that item didn't have an advantage or anything, it just got turned into slime, and then they can then re-release that item, and people don't have it already. So uh, if you have any slime, just get rid of it, it's completely unusable, it's just something which you're holding on to that um, got discontinued. So anyway, that rounds off this video. I hope you found it informative and um, if that it's kind of interesting. Uh, I When this topic came up, I wasn't sure uh, really if I could make it an interesting or useful video, but then there are so many people who then like, I've spoken to about it that went, actually, that would really help me because mine is a mess. So um, anyway, I hope, it's, hope, I hope it's helped you all out and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Um, I will see you in another video soon.